This is KGW News at 11. First here at 11 o'clock, justice for Jerry. Family of an Idaho man killed in a hit and run crash in Clark County hopes the public can help track down the driver. Thank you for joining us here tonight. I'm Galen Etlin. Jerry Boland should have spent the day celebrating Father's Day with his seven kids. Instead, he was remembered at a memorial service in Idaho. Our Mike Benner reports. It's it's super hard. It's super hard. It's a loss. It's a it's a obviously it's a loss. It's a great one. Lori Boland Embry will never get over the sudden death of Jerry Boland. Lori considered the 42 year old a brother. I am biologically his aunt. But my parents adopted him when he was three years old, and he called me his sister. In the early morning hours of June 2nd, Jerry was driving from his home in Idaho Falls, Idaho, to Forks, Washington, when he got a flat tire. This happened on I-205 northbound, just south of the 134th Street exit in the Salmon Creek area of Clark County. Authorities say Jerry was changing the tire on his 1998 Pontiac Bonneville, similar to this one when he was badly hurt in a hit and run crash. The people who had came upon him said that he was uh, conscious and, and speaking. Unfortunately, Jerry's injuries were too serious and he died at the hospital. Lori recalls receiving the news hours later. I personally started screaming, which is probably not the best response to have, but um, it is what it is. Lori says there's absolutely no way the driver who hit Jerry did not realize it. I can't suppose what and where their mind is and was. What Lori does know is that Jerry, of all people, did not deserve this fate. He was just a lovable human being um, and incredibly kind to a fault. Count those traits among the reasons this Father's Day will be an extremely difficult one for Jerry's seven kids. They and the rest of the Boland family are hoping for justice for Jerry. It's not about revenge. It's about resolution and um, peace, peace for everybody, for everybody involved. Our thoughts are certainly with Jerry's family. We can tell you that detectives with the Washington State Patrol are investigating this deadly crash. They, of course, want witnesses to come forward, but they're also asking for anyone who has a dash cam and was driving in the area at the time of the crash to check the footage for any sign of the suspect vehicle. I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. Thinking of them. We now have a follow up to a story we brought you yesterday as people living in Milwaukee recount a deadly shooting involving sheriff's deputies and Oregon State troopers. The Clackamas County Sheriff's Office says deputies and troopers tried to pull a car over Saturday around one in the morning, but the driver refused. A chase eventually ended near Southeast Railroad Avenue and Wood in Milwaukee. Police are not really saying what happened after that, except that the suspect was shot and killed. Neighbors say a standoff lasted for a while before that deadly shot rang out. I heard, um, you know, just put your hands up in the air, please surrender and walk towards Railroad Avenue. And they just kept repeating that. The Clackamas County District Attorney's Office and a major crimes team are investigating. We'll keep you updated. Well, the child is missing tonight in Multnomah County, and the sheriff's office hopes you can help find her. They're looking for 12-year-old Elizabeth Hine there. She was first reported missing in May. Police did find her at a house off Northeast Alberta in Portland, and she was released to a friend's care at that time. This time around, though, deputies think she left home more than a week ago. She was last seen wearing black clothing and a black beanie with graphics like you see in that picture there. She's 5'6", 120 pounds, and has black hair. Anyone with information should contact the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. And this one's a sad story here. In Southern Oregon, a child is dead, lost while swimming near a dam in Little Butte Creek near Eagle Point. The Jackson County Fire District says it responded yesterday afternoon. Two children were swimming near the dam when a seven-year-old disappeared. Crews began searching and later found the child downstream. The child was taken to the hospital but did not make it. The sheriff's office is not releasing any more details out of respect for the family. Lawmakers in Washington are trying to crack down on catalytic converter thefts as new data show how big the problem really has become. Catalytic converters, as you may know, are part of a car that converts toxic pollutants and gases into less toxic pollution. 
The precious metals inside that part are worth big money, and getting one stolen could cost you thousands of dollars to replace and take a long time, too. Most states in the U.S. are seeing a steep increase in these thefts, but Washington takes the number one spot. New data from the public data company been verified show the scale. Since 2019, that three year time frame, if you look at that, 10,000 percent different last year versus, you know, 2019. And then just in the thefts so far this year are more than 2019 and 2020 totaled together. Mm. Now, during the last legislative session, Washington passed a bill requiring scrap metal buyers to have more documentation when buying catalytic converters, and that goes into effect July 1st. It also created a task force to investigate this problem, but some lawmakers want to see harsher punishments overall for the thieves. Well, many parents have waited for this vaccine update a long time. Oregon and Washington will begin distributing COVID shots for kids this week. The FDA and CDC both approved lower doses for kids. And the Western State's Scientific Safety Review Work Group found the Pfizer three-dose vaccine and Moderna two-dose vaccines are both safe and effective for children as young as six months old. The group confirmed this today to the governors of both Oregon and Washington. Shots will be distributed to health care providers and be available for those kids between six months and five years old.